Let us solve a problem which is based on the dynamic loading of polymers. Let us read the problem. A rectangular specimen of dimensions given in the figure below is made of a polymer with Young's modulus in tension of 1.85 GPa. This polymer is subjected to a sinusoidally varying strain amplitude of 1.2 mm after an initial extension of 1.2 mm. With strain frequency of 5 Hz and at room temperature, the phase lag between the strain and stress is measured to be 0.11 radian. Calculate the maximum stress developed, the maximum elastic energy storage, the energy dissipation per cycle, the specific loss and storage and loss moduli at the given dynamic loading condition. So the specimen is like given here. The length of this specimen is 240 millimeter. The width is 10 millimeter and the thickness is 1 millimeter. Now the, the problem says that after an initial extension of 1.2 millimeter, so that this specimen is extended by 1.2 millimeter here and after that a strain sinusoidally varying strain of amplitude 1.2 millimeter is applied so this is the initial position and from here 1.2 millimeter further and then 1.2 millimeter in the backward direction so the strain is oscillating in this way so plus 1.2 then minus 1.2 so this line is in fact is a zero line here i would suggest you to start trying to solve this problem and after you have done your attempt then you can go on to see the solution given here so you may stop the video now and try to solve the problem by yourself now the specimen is first extended by 1.2 millimeter so this is the first extension by 1.2 millimeter and then subjected to a sinusoidally varying strain with a strain amplitude of 1.2 millimeter. So this the amplitude will be 1.2 millimeter on the positive side, 1.2 millimeter on the negative side. Therefore, the maximum strain epsilon will be given as 2.4 over 240. So because total extension is 1.2 plus 1.2, so it makes 2.4. This is the maximum extension. And initial length is 240 millimeter. So therefore, the maximum strain in this specimen will be given by 2.4 over 250. 40 which is equal to 0 0.01 so this is the maximum strain now the given the mod modulus in tension is given as 1.85 gigapascal therefore the maximum stress will be equal to the maximum strain multiplied by the young's modulus so this will be 0 0.01 multiplied by 1.85 gigapascal, which is equal to 18.5 megapascal. So this is the maximum strain, maximum stress that this specimen will experience, 18.5 megapascal. The stress is varying sinusoidally from a maximum value of 18.5 megapascal. So 18.5 megapascal will be when the specimen is stressed all the way to here, to zero. So the specimen is oscillating from here to back to here, which means when the specimen is back to its original length, the stress should be zero. So that's why. The stress is varying from 18.5 to 0 and hence
the stress amplitude is 18.5 over 2 which means plus minus 9.25 megapascals. So this is sigma naught. And the strain amplitude will be given as 1.2 over 240 because the amplitude is the in the positive direction, the maximum 1.2 or in the negative direction is also 1.2. So this is the amplitude 1.2 over 240. 240 is the original length of this specimen. So this gives us the strain amplitude which is epsilon naught is equal to 0 0.00416. Now the maximum stored elastic energy per unit volume is given as this equation and this is equation number 3.88 in our slides. So the maximum stored elastic energy is given as half E1 epsilon naught square where E1 is the storage modulus. So this equation is a general equation for per unit volume of the material. As we have discussed in previous video, the maximum stress is attained when at the quarter of the cycle so pi by 2 so when the strain is at the quarter of its complete cycle so complete cycle is up to here 2 pi but when it is at the quarter it gives the maximum stress so now this equation can be given as this one where e1 has been replaced by this equation which also we have developed previously that the storage modulus is given by sigma naught cos delta over epsilon epsilon naught. Here, sigma naught is the stress amplitude, epsilon naught is the strain amplitude, and delta is the phase lag. So we have just substituted E1 here. So this gives us half sigma naught epsilon naught cos delta as i have said before delta is the phase lag between the stress and the strain therefore the maximum stored elastic energy for this specimen will be given as this equation we have just now developed for per unit volume multiplied by the volume of the specimen phase angle is given as 0 0.11 radian so this is given in the problem so therefore tan delta will be given as 0 0.11 so tan of 0 0.11 radian is 0 0.11 now for a small value of delta we can say that tan delta is nearly equal to sine delta so this is generally true for small value of delta. So therefore, we can say that cos delta is equal to under root 1 minus sine square delta. This comes from the trigonometric formula. And this will be equal to 0 0.994. So cos delta is 0 0.994. This we have just now calculated. So for this equation, we need cos delta epsilon naught epsilon naught and sigma naught have already been calculated and the volume of the material we know so now we can calculate the maximum stored elastic energy for this specimen now we can calculate the maximum elastic energy storage in the specimen as given here so here this is sigma naught i have just changed the units from megapascal to newton per meter square this is epsilon naught we have calculated cos delta also we have calculated and this is the volume of the specimen the dimensions are given in millimeter so i have converted into meter and 10 to the power minus 9 has been multiplied so this gives us a value of 0 0.049 joule so this is the maximum elastic energy storage in the specimen. 
So this is also one of the solution we had to find out. So now we can calculate energy dissipation per cycle, which is given as delta E is equal to 2 pi tan delta multiplied by E. So this equation we have developed before. So now we will use this equation to find out the energy dissipation per cycle. 2 multiplied by 3.14 for pi tan delta also we have calculated before it is 0.11 and the value of E we have got just now we calculated. So delta is given as 0.0317 joule. So this is also one of the solution we had to find out. Now a specific loss is given as the ratio of delta E over E which is equal to 2 pi tan delta. So we can calculate the specific loss as 2 multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by 0.11. So it gives us 0.69. Now we can calculate the storage modulus E1 as equal to sigma naught cos delta over epsilon naught. So sigma naught and epsilon naught also we have calculated before. So this is 9.25 megapascal 0.0. 00416 and cos delta also we have calculated just now as 0.994 so this gives us 2210 megapascal which is equal to 2.21 gigapascal now in a similar way we can calculate e2 which is the loss modulus which is given as sigma naught sine delta over epsilon naught so this is 9.25 multiplied by now sine delta is 0.11 and divided by 0.00416 so this gives us 244.6 megapascal so the, these are the solutions we had to find out in this problem. We should remember that all these values we have calculated for the given strain frequency of 5 Hz.